Thank you. Um, just going to tell you, I'll just pull this down for a minute in case I drop it. Just going to tell you a little bit about our, uh, our player of the year this year. Um, not from a, a, a traditional sort of route that we'd expect really for um, rugby players, particularly in this town. Uh, we have got some incredible youngsters that are coming through and have been through the academy, but um, this player, and, and she, she's standing over there, so I'm, I'm going to use her name now, she's going to have worked it out. Uh, Anna Davis actually is, is from Nottingham, but come via Bath because she did a little bit of university study. Um, and her route to the game was initially with a trial for um, GB teachers. She was doing a little bit of work in education at the time. Um, had played a little bit of rugby union at, at Bath and, and, and liked that game, but had traditionally been an athlete, a hurdler. Um, so she played a little bit of rugby union, went to trials for GB teachers rugby league, did phenomenally well got into GB Teachers Rugby League. We just got a spider issue, hang on a second. Try not to kill it. Good for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Just drops it off its head. I know. It all happens here, Chris. <laughs> it all happens here. Let's go for it. Anyway, we'll move. It's only a small one, so don't, got, don't worry if you're afraid of spiders. It's, it's, yeah. it's small skirt of us. Um, so she had a trials for GB uh, teachers and, and got into that. Uh, and then through that, decided that she wanted to play rugby league. Um, and lock, stock and barrel moved up north, uh, came to live in Wigan, put everything into being a player for this club um, and has done it phenomenally well. What I try to look for in, in a player initially is uh, a good person and a good athlete. Anna's not just a, a good person, she's a great person and a great athlete and is developing into a great rugby player. She's earned a call up for England this year. Who wholeheartedly want to commit to this club 
and absolutely thawed everything at it. And, and she, like I said, she's moved up here um, and, and, and managed to secure a job. She works in the foundation now as well. So, you know, that, that's been a perfect model for, for women as a club for female players. And, and uh, I think that's definitely the, the route that we look for, for adding talent as we go through. And it, it's certainly paid dividends there. So, Anna, if you'd like to come up and, and receive this award. for the lads tonight um, but obviously we still want to reward them for the hard work and obviously give them the player of the match awards so we're going to start with going back to the Huddersfield game the man of the match was Lucas Mason Cross-examine him, see if we can find out any more secrets. Be throwing things out, can't keep up with them. Me, we're coming with a big round of applause for Chris Rathinski. <laughs> you didn't get on as daintily as me, Chris. <laughs> Thought I might have needed a lift. But great to have you here, Chris. Uh, we were disappointed that you had a prior engagement for the presentation dinner. You were definitely missed. Yeah. But certainly, I know Lynn's touched on it, but the representation that we got from the club with the players, the academy, the reserves, the coaching staff was absolutely awesome. And I'm sure you all want to show your appreciation for that.
everybody was just so approachable. There was su such ease with uh, having photographs, autographs, everything. They were absolutely brilliant, a real credit to our club. Yeah, I think um, they're a great group. You know, they self-police. They have a strong leadership group and, uh, you know, the coaching staff to a degree don't really enforce anything because they do it themselves. Um, and that takes a lot of work in the, you know, throughout the season, in pre-season, kind of building the standards, what you want to do. So I guess Matt deserves a lot of credit for that and the leadership group for, for driving it. I unfortunately couldn't attend because it was my daughter's birthday uh, and I would rather have been there, to be honest. Because <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I promised I'd, I'd take her to London and I was in makeup shops and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it, it was beautiful, but I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Liam, I meant that he actually seemed to carry the team. He was the main forward and took us forward, you know, and I just have a lot of um, respect for Liam. I think he really has been top like this um, season. Yeah. But equally filling that gap, we've relied on the likes of Junior and Harvey. How impressed have you been with their development? Yeah, look, we, we've, we, we've got a youth development system that that produces, you know, the, the statistics show that uh, a lot of players that we produce here will go to play a lot of games for Wigan. And if they don't, they'll go and play a lot of games for other clubs in Super League. Um, I think them two in particular, we always thought that they would play a number of games this season. I think what's probably, I won't say caught us off guard, is, is what I would say is the impact that they've had in games has probably been a little bit greater than probably would, we would have thought. I mean, you know, Harvey Hill's played in some big, big games, um, semi-finals, and he, uh, you know, being able to do it technically and physically is one thing, but mentally and emotionally for a young lad, that's another challenge, but he's took it all in his stride. And then Junior's just, <sighs> he's just different, you know, he's like, I mean, we all knew he was a, a physical lad, but if you had a body like him, you wouldn't buy a t-shirt. The game against Lee, was that just what we needed, you know, at this time of the season? It was one tough encounter. Uh, do you feel that that was really good for us? I, I reckon when everybody saw the fixture list at the start of the season and they saw Lee away the last game, I think everybody, even though we didn't know how, how well Lee were going to perform at that time, I think everybody knew that was going to be a big game. Yeah. Um, and I think the way that it, it fell, um, you know, Lee have got a lot of staff, a lot of players who potentially have uh, been here. Yeah. You know, this, and it's always difficult playing against people who have been at this club, but everyone's got a point to prove. Um, and the night itself, it, it reminded me, it reminded me of the old Central Park days. You know, there was, um, there were fireworks before the game and the smell of smoke in the air and there was dew on the grass. And the game itself was as, as close to a test match as you'd see, you know. In the second half, it was, it was percentages and I know there was a lot of um, uh, conjecture about the potential try for, for Oliver Gildar um, and then they said they would have won the game but I go back and say we wouldn't have played the last 20 minutes the way we played the last 20 minutes if you know if if, if it was a try there's no way we would have been kicking on the third tackle things like that so but it just felt a really big game and um, you know again there's been a number of sold out signs throughout Super League this season which has been terrific uh, viewing figures are up, uh, TV attendances are up, so there's a, there's a lot of, a lot to like, but that was a pretty special night. And we're really pleased with the attendances here at Wigan, in the second only to lead, aren't we, over the season? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the season tickets are, are, are considerably up, they're probably a, a level that was, that was at probably eight or nine years ago, which is good. Um, you know, walk-ups is always difficult, difficult to, to work out, you know, whether or, or who you're playing, etc. But I think, I think we're, we're in a good place. Touch there on Chairman, how good was it that Natty brought uh, Ian to the forefront to raise the trophy? As, as fans, we all appreciated it, but Ian just seemed so reticent on these occasions. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, actually Liam Farrell offered him to, for him to go up and get the trophy. Um, and I think probably that meant more to Ian than anything because you know once it, it, once once your players do it as your captain does it that means a lot you know Matt and Ian have got a really good friendship but I think that was a really special moment from Liam and Ian turned it down um, but it doesn't didn't matter the fact that he thought that 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 it was the right thing to do you know that 
that'll keep me in company for a very, very long time. Um, I think I think the way that, that Matt handled the, the victory, um, you know, he absolutely nails his, his, his post match stuff every single week, but he was very humble and he was very contained. He still he still knows that that was only one step on and ultimately where we want to get to. Do you think Derek Beaumont would have needed inviting to lift the shield? <laughs> You know, he, uh, he's uh, he potentially he's what the game's needed for a very, very long time. You know, he's done something there. He's 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 pinned his hat on this, this, this on the on the leopards, and you know, he's had a he's had an economic impact on the town. You know, it's really reinvigorated the place. Um, the crowds are up through the roof. You know, to to finish where they finished in the league and to win the Challenge Cup, it, you know, it's fairy tale stuff. So, I think. Um, I think he's done a terrific job. United with the 24 nil score. Could have been a little three. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not as sick as you on them. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, right. I just, I just take anyone. But you know, I think uh, if you if you look at the coaches, um, he's great scoring points. But in them conditions, controlling ball, defending your line, they're the habits. That's what that's what keeps you know keeps coaches happy. Um, <coughs> You know, and I, uh, I was pleased. I was, I was pleased. The game went ahead. You know, we was, we was nervous right up to kick off because if that gets called off, then Bevan can't play this weekend. <laughs> you know, so it's that is literally as, it's uh, it's touch and go. So um, yeah, it was a, it was a good one. It was a good one. You said before about the youth system. Uh, we've we've got a big talented squad, but a lot of that is because of our youth system. Yes. Hundred um, percent. It's it's the business. The business model's best on it. We uh, we we recruit. We've got outstanding staff, outstanding staff who um, dedicate so much time uh, and effort and emotional energy into these players. Not just making them good rugby players, but making them good kids. They were admirable on the Saturday night, considering they had that blow delivered to them when they attended the presentation dinner. They were really, really good, weren't they? You know very impressed with how they moved on and you talk there about you know players accepting things and moving on moving on and it's hard and before you mentioned about joe shorrocks and like you say he got sent off within minutes of the whole game out and how bad did joe feel that that had happened to him and how mad do you get when we have an incident like this week with Walmsley, where it was you know Worse, I think, than Joe's, but he gets 10 minutes and he doesn't even get a, a suspension. I mean, Joe even had a suspension, didn't he? How difficult was it to move Joe on after that game? Joe, Joe's a strong kid, so that was never a problem. He knows, you know, we win together, we lose together. So that, weren't, that wasn't a problem. But, you know, it was, it, was, it was probably a quiet journey home for him, but, you know, we're a, we're a, a team who build connections, so... I'm not, I'm, we have no issues about him recovering. So, uh, do you feel that, I mean, we've had four meetups with Hull KR, do you feel that we know this team well? Um, it's two each. Do you think that this is the one where the lads don't need the motivation, they're going to go out there and do the job? Um, well, well, look, it's a semi-final, so what, what's happened in the past, they, they won't be thinking about that. They won't be thinking about winning it 3-2. It, this is about you know, getting to Old Trafford. Um, I always have, we always say, well, you know, what's what's your why? Is our why greater than their why? And I think I think we've got a group at the minute who's self-policing. Um, the lads won the league leaders, and you typically think they'll you know I'm going to celebrate. But Faz came to see me, and he said, oh, we don't want to celebrate. Um, we're going to go and have a meal on, on Sunday afternoon in, in Manchester. I'm like, that's weird. You know, I'm, I'm usually I'm usually used to hanging out with Gary Connolly, and that you know that. <laughs> so, um, they know the importance of the game, but we're, we're, look, we're up against a, a very, very well-drilled side. They don't make, don't make lots of errors. Um, they've got an outstanding kicking game. Uh, they've got a great young coach in Willie Peters, who you know, we, um, we've all got a soft spot for Willie. He, he did great for us when he was here. He was, he was my next-door neighbour for, for, for two years, and uh, he's a really good lad. Um, and I really want him to do well, but you know, not on Saturday. But it'll be, it'll be a tough game. It'll be a really tough game. Looking at you know all of the season, how good is it that we've got a nomination for Coach of the Year, a nomination for Man of Steel, and a nomination for Young Player of the Year? How good is that? Yeah, I mean it's it's amazing, isn't it? Um, 
it shows we're doing some things right. I think, um, look, I'd like to, I'm biased, I'd like to think we walk away with, you know, with, a, with a handful, but uh, there are some really, really good players, really good coaches throughout the league. Um, you know, I, I, I see what Bevan brings, I see what he brings on a daily basis, I see the moments of magic. Um, he could easily walk away with Man Steel, and I don't think anybody in the competition would have a, a problem with it. And ultimately, I think that's what we all should be aiming for. In the past, there have been people who've won Man of Steel and there have been conjectures at other clubs. And I think if Bevan won it, everyone would stand up and say, that's the right decision. Um, I probably think that similar with Matt as well. Uh, you know, I think he has an affinity. Um, he has an affinity with his players. He has an affinity with other coaches. The media like him because he, he gives well-rounded answers and he's accessible. Uh, and, and I think probably Super League like him as well for his articulation. I think he, he represents the club and the sport really, really well. Um, Brad O'Neill, uh, uh, we, we forget how young he is. He's played in some very, very big games. You know, uh, he, he won the Challenge Cup, obviously, at Tottenham with us. He uh, is an energy energy uh, provider around the facility. Um, he's got a really good chance. And then, of course, Abbas. If, uh, Top try scorer. Um, he's had an incredible year. We got the announcement today that Luke Thompson's coming here. Um, we've got the other uh, players in the bag. Have you any more surprises to spring on us, Chris? There might be a couple. Might be a couple. But uh, <laughs> I, well, I, obviously, I can't comment on on things that are, uh, are not out there yet. But um, it's getting it's getting harder. And I'll tell you why it's getting harder because the rumours about Luke Thompson have been out there for. for for months, absolute months. I, I went to Australia in in, in uh, March or May or something, and I met him there. But at the time he was injured, at the time he wanted to get back playing, um, at the time, you know, he was living in a ridiculous penthouse overlooking the ocean, you know, the, 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 it's, not just rugby, it's not just rugby league. So people think it's been done for, for ages. If I was to tell you that at 7.30 yesterday morning, he had his medical, and if I was to tell you at five o'clock tonight, I signed the contract there before it went off at, at oh, six o'clock. That is the reality of the time scale of when it happened. But unfortunately, Rugby League is a village, um, and it's an even smaller village with the uh, advent of these phones now. Which, you know, I find myself actually defending rumours more than ever before, and that's not good practice, defending rumours. So yes, we was interested, but it, you know that only got finalised. <laughs> um, so so that's all really really good news. And now what I want to ask you: you saying there about your tables on the wall, the negotiating, you flying to Australia, everything. As a player, did you ever feel that this would way, be where you would finish up at Wigan? No, no you know, listen, I know loads of you guys in the room. You, you know, you've been you've been good to me for many many years. And you might remember that I said that when I finished that, I never wanted to be a coach because ultimately it takes over your life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're sat here and um, look, it's, it's, um, it, it's a very, very hard job. You know, I, 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 will, I don't mind saying in front of you, you guys, you, you, you know, you're the most demanding bunch of fans in the league. But, but, but it's a dream, isn't it? You know, if you said I would be doing this, so, but it, it's it's tough, you know. Um, Matt can win the trophies, players can win the trophies. Yeah, if something go wrong, it's my fault. <laughs> so that's that's. But I know what I, I know what I signed up for. Um, Ten years ago, uh, the chairman sat me in his office and told me, he "said You will be, you will be chief exec before I leave." So. Um, with it comes a hell of a lot of responsibility. You know, for, all over the years I've, I've become stronger, you know, really stronger. You have to put yourself out there. You have to um, take the go. I always say, you know, there are, there are people in my position at other clubs who, who, who go like this and I, I just try to remain balanced throughout, you know, triumph and disaster and, uh, and just try and take each day as they come. But it's an unbelievable job. I, I'm very lucky to do it. Um, I've been lucky with the mentorship of Ian. Uh, and I've had some, some great help along the way from the likes of, of Michael Maguire and, and, and Wayne. So, uh, again with Ian, um, during Ian's period we've done some really 
way out things, taking Super League over to Australia, playing um, Hull, uh, doing the trip down to Millwall. Uh, how forward thinking has Ian been about spreading the word of rugby league, not just Wigan? London, London's very important to him. Um, you know, he obviously lives down that way and he sees that as an area which rugby league should be played. So that's always been a, a major focus for him and that's the reason he took, he took the game to Millwall. I think over the, over, the, over the years he's probably been perceived as the, uh, the villain within, within the game, challenging the, the governing body to do better and, and challenging um, chief executive officers of RFL and Super League, etc. But I will say he's always done it with the right thing in mind. And that's not Wigan, by the way. He's always said to me, you fight for Wigan, but you need to fight for the game more than anybody else. So he's always done it in the right way. Um, he absolutely adores the sport you know, and he adores the club. So. Um, I should imagine there's been involvement with Mike Danson for a few months. It's not just all going to happen overnight. Um, how good is it, you know, like you touched on it before, that we've got the um, shared stadium and joint working to a big degree? Yeah, I guess um, I'll probably be, I've had to go, I've had to go to London probably once a month for the last 16 months, um, which is, which is, you know, I've, I've, I've known for a while what's been happening, but, uh, so I've got to know Mike you know, intimately, I, I, I know his vision. I remember when Ian first phoned me to tell me that he just had dinner with, you know, with the next owner. Um, and I won't say, I won't say there was elation, but I think he was excited that he would find a man with similar values to him. Um, you, you know, Ian had dinner with him and he got a really good feel about his community focus. Um, very humble man you know, ridiculously wealthy, but very grounded. Um, and I also think one of the greatest pressures of ownership is finding your next owner. You know, I think potentially Ian's legacy could have been ruined if he would have handed the club to somebody who didn't kind of match or build what we, what, you know, what we, what we'd achieved here. So that was a real pressure for Ian. Um, so, th so there was genuine relief there. Uh, and I think during the last, 14 to 12, 12 to 14 months, we've, uh, we've had some really long in-depth board meetings about, about what the future looks like. We're going to get bigger, stronger, and just get the feeling that we're on the cusp of something amazing. We're going to really be taking off for the next few seasons. We'll get the, the sports about cycles as well, uh, and where, whatever you say about St Helens over the hill, they've done, they've done incredible, you know, they really have. Um, but potentially a couple of their players are now going off the other side and they need to start refilling. Yeah. And we're at a point where we're probably just going the other way. Yeah. Um, similar to Catalan, you know, they've sounds a huge impact, on, a huge influence on that group. They've got five or six players leaving. That'll be a little bit different. We've got Hulk Ayawa now coming up. They're, you know, they're, they're raising the bar. You have Hull who openly said that they will go with the younger squad because, you know, finances aren't great. So, it's all about cycles, it's all about peaking at the right time. Um, we, we've, we've done a lot of work to, to, to do a, or to create and recruit and retain a good squad, but it doesn't mean anything unless you, uh, unless you do it out there. You know, we, we, we use this facility, to be honest, as part of, um, part of a, our retention, you know, we do a presentation. But this doesn't mean anything unless you, you do the hard work, you know, you buy into everything, you commit, you're honest with each other. Um, and ever since the more and more I'm in this game, it's just not rocket science.